This presentation is on otitis externa by Leanna Bohr. So first we're going to go over just a little bit of review of the anatomy of the external ear. So you have your helix, your anti-helix with the anti-helical fold in between, um, your tragus, your anti-tragus, the lobule, the concha, and the fossa, which some people call it the triangular fossa. And the external ear, or pinna, includes the auricle as well as the external auditory canal. So anatomically, the ear is divided into three different parts, the outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. The outer ear consists of the auricle, external, au external auditory canal, and then the tympanic membrane divides the external ear and the middle ear. So that brings us to the middle ear, which consists or is an air-filled cavity in the temporal bone consisting of the malleus, incus, and stapes, which um, are the three small bones known as, known as the ossicles, which transmit sound from the tympanic membrane to the oval window of the inner ear. And then your inner ear consists of the semicircular canals, which play a role, a major role in balance, and then your cochlea, which is for hearing. So acute otitis externa, which is also known as external otitis, or also the common people will call it swimmer's ear, um, is a form of cellulitis which involves the skin and subdermis of the external auditory canal, along with inflammation and variable edema. Um, often it's rapid onset of symptoms and there are signs of ear canal inflammation. So although there's no official classification system that's been really published, different authors have classified otitis externa differently. Um, one suggested classification system is listed here. So you can have furunculosis, which is also known as localized otitis externa, um, which is a localized infection in the hair follicles in the cartilaginous portion of the external auditory canal. Or you can have diffuse otitis externa, which the infection is limited to the skin of the external auditory canal and concha, and possibly the tym tympanic membrane. Um, you can also have it classified as due to other skin conditions, um, such as seborrheic dermatitis, allergic dermatitis, atopic dermatitis, or psoriasis. Um, invasive otitis externa would be your necrotizing or malignant otitis externa, which is necrosis of adjacent cartilage or bone of the external auditory canal. And then there's others such as keratosis obturans, which is hyperkeratosis of the external auditory canal skin, leading to corrosion of the canal bone. So for causes of otitis externa. Um, it can be bacterial, viral, or even fungal, but most commonly it's bacterial. And the two most common bacteria bacterias that cause it are Pseudomonas aeruginosa as well as Staphylococcus aureus. And then for fungal, otitis externa is commonly caused by Aspergillus. Here's a picture of otitis externa caused by the aspergillus. You can see the fungal spore formation in the external auditory canal. Patients with otitis externa commonly present with a history of recent water exposure or mechanical trauma. So putting fingers, cotton swabs, or other objects in your ears can lead to otitis externa by damaging the thin layer of skin that's in your ear canal. Um, this is the, as a result of the um, water exposure, it's common, especially here in Arizona with so many swimming pools and kids in and out of the water all summer long. Otitis externa will have the common presentation of otalgia, pruritus, purulent discharge, erythema, ear canal edema, tragal tenderness, and possibly decreased hearing. So the symptoms are often mild at first, but then get worse if the infection spreads or goes untreated. 
So commonly a patient will come in complaining of ear pain and discomfort when you pull on the pinna or push on the tragus, um, very itchy and discharge, redness, sometimes a feeling of fullness in the ear due to the swelling, and then muffled hearing. Upon examination, the tympanic membrane may or may not be visible depending on the level of edema and debris that's present because of the infection. Um, but you want to use your encephalator bulb on your otoscope to check for tympanic membrane mobility. Now in otitis externa, you should see normal tympanic membrane mobility. But if it was something like acute otitis media, then the mobility would be um, definitely less mobile, so that's a difference than, that you can see between the two. And don't forget when you're examining patients' ears, um, for adults you want to pull up, on the, up and back on the oracle, and for young children you pull down and back. For treatment of bacterial acute otitis externa, um, both of these options are first line, just a primary and secondary option. Um, and I got these from Hippocrates. So for the primary option, it's a ciprofloxacin dexamethasone um, otic suspension. So in children greater than six months, greater than or equal to six months of age and adults, you give four drops into the affected ear twice daily for seven to 10 days. Or a secondary option would be the neomycin polymyxin B hydrocortisone combination, which in children you'd prescribe three drops into the infected ear three to four times daily for seven to ten days, but in adults it's four drops into the affected ear three times daily for seven to ten days. You can also add acetaminophen for pain management if needed. Um, analgesics allow for faster return to normal activities if the pain is really bothering them and causing them um, to not carry on with their daily activities. For the treatment of fungal acute otitis externa, um, the primary first line is hydrocortisone and acetic acid on expansion. So, for children greater than three years of age and adults, it's three to five drops into the affected ear three times a day for seven to 10 days. Like I said, there are other options, so you can refer back to Hippocrates to see the extra options. So if there's a lot of edema of the canal and um, it's preventing the drops from entering the ear, you can use what's called an ear wick which may be inserted into the ear canal for drug delivery. So you insert the ear wick, and then you're gonna put the drops on the wick, and it will expand when getting wet with the drops, eventually allowing the drops to reach uh, further into the ear canal. And as the edema decreases, the wick will eventually fall out or it can be removed. For a list of differential diagnoses for otitis externa, we have acute otitis media, furunculosis, which I described earlier, contact dermatitis of the ear canal, viral infections of the external ear, cancer of the external auditory canal, or cholesteatoma. Here's a list of some of my references, and that'll be all for my presentation. Thank you.